He's turning things around, folks. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. I'll tell you, I'm just excited about the will of God and what he has for us. Amen. I'm so looking forward to September. Yes. September. I don't remember what date we chose, but uh, it was the 14th for me. I'll be spending 40 years in ministry. Amen. 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 I'm going to leave it up to the board to decide what they're going to do and who they're going to bring in. But it, it better be a good time. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. Amen. The ladies are going to dance this morning for us before I bring forth the word. But I do want to share with you that God has just been so good. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. the enemy tries so hard to, to detect mm -hmm. things that we might be a little behind in. Mm -hmm. But God always reminds you who he is yes. and what he has done for you. This morning, in prayer, my wife made mention in her prayer and afterwards a statement. Mm -hmm. Feed my sheep. Pastor Sean made a couple comments during praise and worship, and I said to myself, they were not in my office. <laughs> this week when I put together the message for this morning, that God has a word for the mid church. Thank you, Lord. And like I said, I'm just trying to waste a little time here while the ladies are getting ready. That was supposed to be you doing this. Oh, amen. 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 I didn't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> but we learned it. Uh, yeah. We want to keep Sister Madge in prayer. She's in the hospital this morning. We definitely our praise team leaders who are at an award ceremony and the others, for whatever reason, they're not here today. We just thank God that you're here today to hear the word of God. Amen. Amen. But we want to keep the rest of those in prayer. We received a lot of good reports about Friday night and what God did here. And that's one of the things Amen. that is important that we do outreach. Yeah. That we can reach out to the community. Um, and I'm looking forward to during the summer that we can do some outreach. And it's always not it's not all about being inside the building. Amen. It's about going out and ministering to those who are in need. Amen. 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 Does anybody else have a testimony this morning they'd like to share? I just um thank God that you said that uh, Friday night that we had a team, um, my son, my grandson uh, they were ministering on the sidewalk, the homeless. Oh, yeah. They went back to the tent city where the homeless lived and then went back uh, and re uh, reached out to them and gave wow. them tracks. We, the Lord, thank God, he gave us, he, uh, gave us favor yeah. in the Christian bookstore. Uh, they gave a whole bag of tracks and outreach stuff and gifts just poured into us, about $200 free stuff. And uh, tra tracks and stuff, so we were able, she didn't even know what we were going to do outreach that Friday night. And I had gone to the Christian bookstore to get some things for the ladies conference that Saturday. But she gave me all the tracks and the books and just everything. So we gave it to the people. We gave it to the people. Amen. And yesterday, uh, someone came in and, and gave us uh, stuff for the homeless and uh, food pantry and just, he just, God is just building up. And I just thank God for that. But we hit the tent city. Yes. 
Because I love that. Yeah. Go out in the woods and find the homeless and feed them and, you know, bring them in. God will do the cleaning, but we bring them. If we fish, he'll clean the fish. Amen. Amen. And so that, that's, uh, that, I just love that. I love it. Amen. And I thank God for Friday night and what God is doing. It. And they, you know what? It was a little uh, disturbing and caring, this story, mm -hmm. this, this discouraging and discouraging mm -hmm. this morning to see, you know, when we came here and like, God, what, what, is, the, what is going on? Yeah. But God knows. Oh, God yeah. knows. Yeah. And so we got to do is trust them. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 That's my testimony. Amen.
already playing. turn to John chapter 21 and when verses 15 through 17 and when we get there John chapter 21 verses 15 through 17 John chapter 21 verses 15 through 17 Hallelujah. You may be seated just for a little bit because I'm going to go over a few things before I get to the scripture. I want to start out this morning by telling you all that I love my wife, Judy. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that I love her? Do you honestly believe I love her? There are times that I don't really enjoy being with her, but I love her. There's times that I don't really want to talk to her, but I love her. I might go for days without even talking to her, but I love her. When I do talk to her, it's usually because I want to ask her for something or maybe for a few seconds before each mail, but I love her. When I do talk to her, I want to, my mind starts wondering and thinking about other things. But I love her. She's not always part of my everyday life. I think about her more on Sunday mornings than any other time of the week. But I love her. I meet with other husbands and we sing songs about our wives. I even talk publicly to the rest of the husbands for about 45 minutes about how much I love her. She writes me love letters, but I don't read them very often. But I love my wife. I give her a little pocket change every week as long as it doesn't cut deeply into how much I want to spend on myself. But I love my wife. Now, how many of you, from what I just said, would say that I love my wife? 
not many. But none of what I just said was true. I want to start out this morning by telling you all that I love Jesus. Amen. Do you believe I love Jesus? There are times that I really don't enjoy being with him, but I love Jesus. There are times that I really don't want to talk to him, but I love Jesus. I might go for days without talking to him, but I love Jesus. When I talk to him, it's usually because I want to ask him for something, or maybe for a few seconds before each meal. But I love Jesus. He's not always part of my everyday life. I think about him more on Sunday mornings than any other time of the week. But I love Jesus. I meet with other husbands and we sing songs about our wife, Jesus. I even talk publicly to the rest of the husbands about 45 minutes how much I love Jesus. He writes me love letters, but I don't read them very often. But boy, do I love Jesus. I give him on Sunday just a little pocket change every week, as long as it doesn't cut deeply into how much I want to spend on myself. But I love Jesus. I don't care to have it very much to do with him and make him part of my life. But I love Jesus. Now, how many of you, from what I just said, were saying that I love Jesus? But for my part, none of that is true. Now, let's translate this into our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. After all, we are called the bride of Christ, aren't we? We say that we love Jesus. It's easy to say, isn't it? But if we treat our wives like we treat Jesus, and let's not make this one-sided, women, if we treat our husbands like they treated Jesus, we wouldn't be married very long, would we? Or if we were married, it wouldn't be a very happy marriage would it? I'm going to give you a short verse of the first 14, the first 14 verses of John chapter 21. That will lead us into our text this morning. Now Jesus had just met his disciples on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. They had fished all night and caught nothing. Jesus told them to cast their nets on the other side of the boat. But when they did, they caught all the fish they could handle. Jesus met them on the shore and had breakfast ready for them. And after breakfast, Jesus confronted Peter, Peter publicly before the rest of the disciples. Now, let's read John chapter 1, 21, verses 15 through 17. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, lovest me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Son of Jonah, lovest me. He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Son of Simon, Son of Jonah, lovest thou me. Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me. And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, 
feed my sheep. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy, and thank you for loving us so much. Father, have your way today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Peter was grieved when asked this question the third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. Notice what Jesus asked Peter three times. Do you love me? Why three times? Because when Peter was confronted with the opportunity to demonstrate his love for Jesus, he denied knowing Jesus three times. A threefold denial demands a threefold confession. It was around a fire of coals that Peter denied Jesus three times and lost his ministry. Oh it is now around the fire of coals that Jesus restores Peter to the ministry. Let's think about how Peter must have felt during these few weeks after denying Jesus. The night before Jesus was crucified, Peter told Jesus according to the scriptures in Matthew 26. 33 and 35. Peter declared, Every, if, even if everyone else deserts you, I will never. Peter, Jesus replied, the truth is, the very night before the rooster crowed, you would deny me three times. No, Peter insisted, not even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the other disciples bowed the same. In John chapter 13, verses 37 and 38. Well, why can't I come now, Lord? He asked. I'm ready to die for you. Jesus answered, die for me. No, before the rooster crows, tomorrow morning you will deny three times that you even knew me. Peter loved Jesus. He had no intentions of letting him down. This is the same Peter that walked on the water to get where Jesus was. The same Peter who said in Mark chapter 10, verse 28, Peter began to mention that all he and the other disciples had left behind were giving up everything to follow you, he said. The same Peter who was cut off the ear of the servant on high priest to defend Jesus. The same Peter who followed Jesus into the courtroom where there were all the other disciples. The same Peter who drove into the, dove into the water to be the first to meet Jesus on shore. And scripture tells us in John 21 verse 7. Then the disciples who Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic and has stripped all the way down and jumped in the water and swam ashore. Peter loved Jesus, but Peter also failed Jesus. Do you love Jesus? There's times that we know that we love Jesus, but we fail sometimes. None of us are perfect. We all make a mistake one way or another. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory yes. of God. Listen, if I point one finger at you, I got three fingers right. pointing back at me. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I might hurt you, but I might not intend to hurt you, but I will hurt you one way or another somewhere down the line. But Jesus will never fail. Hallelujah. He will never hurt you. He's there to comfort you. That's why they sent the Holy Spirit. But you see, Peter loved Jesus. Right now, that's all that Jesus that was on Peter's mind. What must Jesus think of me? Will Jesus forgive me? Have you ever asked yourself, will he really forgive me for the things I have done? 
Peter said, oh, I can just see you now. I really blew it. I'm a total failure. How have you ever felt this way? Have you ever failed Jesus? Do you feel that Jesus can never love you again? After all, what you have done to feel him. Peter had made some pretty bold statements about how much he loved Jesus. But when it came down to crunch time, he bombed out. He let Jesus down. But Jesus needs to restore Peter back into the fellowship with him. That's what Jesus wants to do for you today. If you feel Jesus in any way, he wants to restore you. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. All you got to do is come to me. In spite of all our failures, denials, times of disappointments, times of disappointing Jesus, breaking his heart, rejecting his love to us, Jesus wants to restore us back into his fellowship with him. Listen, no one's perfect. We got to get rid of pride. Yes, Lord. We got to get rid of egos. We got to get rid of thinking we're better than anybody else because we're not better than anyone else. We got to know who we are in Christ. And if you know who you are in Christ and you're living for him and you love him with the agape love that he loves you, you are a king, Brother Mike. Sister Joyce, you're a queen. Listen to how Jesus does this. He says, Simon, son of Jonah. Listen, he didn't call him Peter. He went back to call him his original name, Simon. He doesn't call him Peter the Rock. You see, Jesus had great plans for Peter. Jesus wants to restore him so he can become the leader of the new church. Jesus wants Peter to become the rock again and be strong in faith and courage. But right now, Jesus is going back to call him Simon until his ministry is restored and he finds his strength in Christ. Then these, they wait. Sometimes we have to wait on the Lord. Yes, Lord. We get into a rush sometimes in ministry. We want to see this building filled with people. We want to be able to move into a larger facility. We want to do everything. But God sometimes says, wait. Because I will send in the right people at the right time. Here. I can just imagine Jesus telling Peter as Peter being a fisherman that he was do you love me more than fishing? you see Jesus is very serious about sacrificing ourselves for him Christ. 
There's times we've got to sacrifice, especially those in ministry. We have to sacrifice our time. There's a hurt and dying world out there. There's people hurting so bad. People are attending churches now where they're, they're ordaining transcenders. And people are going there listening to this transcender preach the word. We live in a lost and dying world. Jesus is very serious about us sacrificing ourselves for him. In prayer. Wednesday night prayer. Sunday morning's prayer. Are you having time alone with God in your own secret place? In your own prayer closet? Do you love him that much that you're willing to sacrifice? Jesus said in Luke 18, 29 and 30, I assure you that everyone who has given up a house or a wife or brother or a parent or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will be paid many times over in his life. Look how serious Jesus is tight following him. In Luke chapter 14, 26 and 35, if you want to be my follower, you must love me more than you love your own father, mm. mother, wife, children, yes. brothers, sisters. Yes, more than your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. My God. And you cannot be my disciple if you do not carry your own cross and follow me. But you don't begin until you count the cost with, uh, for who would be construction of a building without first getting estimates and then checking to see if there's enough money to pay the bills. Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before running out of funds. And then how everyone will laugh at you. They would say there's that person who started that building and ran out of money before it was finished. Or what king would ever dream of going into war without first sitting down with his counselors and discussing whether his army of 10,000 is strong enough to defeat the 20,000 soldiers? If he is not able, why the enemy is still far away? He will send a delegation to discuss terms of peace. So no one can become my disciples without giving up everything for me. Salt is good for the seasoning, but if it loses its flavor, mm -hmm. how do you make it salty again? Mm. Flavorless salt is good neither for the soil or nor for the fertilizer. It is thrown away. Anyone who's willing to hear should listen and understand. Jesus is asking Peter this, do you love me more than these things? Let's take Peter out of the picture for just one moment. Jesus is focusing on you now. He asks you the same question. Do you love me more than you love things? Are there things that you love more than Jesus? What things are you putting ahead of Jesus in your life? Are you putting your job, your money, your toys, your pleasures, your time, are they more important than Jesus? Do you love me more than these things? These people 
the other disciples. Do you love me more than you love the other disciples? Who are you marching against? Peter, you once told me that you did. That they might all forsake me, but you never would. Peter, do you really love me more than they? Do you really love me more than you love them? Let's take Peter out of the picture for just a minute. Jesus is now focusing on you. He asks you the same question. Do you love me more than you love other people? Is there anybody in your life that you love more than Jesus? Who are you putting ahead of Jesus in your life? Is it yourself? Your wife? Your husband? Your children? Your parents? Is there anyone in your life that you have more love for than Jesus? Now, I, I listen, I realize that you love them differently than you love Jesus. You're supposed to. But is there anyone in your life that takes away your love for Jesus and you love them more than you love him? We're talking about agape love here. Peter, do you really, really love me? Do you love me with a total commitment? A love that you're willing to sacrifice for Jesus. Do you love me with all your heart? Now that's agape love. It's a really, really, really love Jesus. Amen. Well, listen, look what Peter's response was in John 21, 15. After brief breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Joseph, do you love me more than these? He said, yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Love you, the kind of love that Peter was using here was the lay. Brother of yours. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Peter's response was pretty non-committal. That's not what Jesus is asking. He didn't ask Peter, Peter, do you like me? He's saying, Peter, do you love me with that agape type of love? He's asking Peter if he really, really, really loved him enough to forsake everything and everyone to follow him. Hey, when some of us were dating, do we ever want a real relationship with someone and they told us, let's just be friends. But yet you love that person and they say, I just want to be your friend. This is what Peter's doing. Mm -hmm. Jesus wanted to have a relationship with Peter. But Peter, by him saying, yeah, I love you, the way he pronounced, pronounced it, was saying, yeah, Jesus, I love you, but I just want to be your friend. Jesus wants us to be more than friends with him. It hurt, didn't it, when that person told you, Yes, let's just be friends. You see, there's a difference between agape and paleo love. Agape love and paleo love is brotherly love type of love. Like I love my dog. Mm. I love my horse. Mm. Mm. I love Italian food. I like a pizza. <laughs> Thank you. 
But agape love is an intense, urgent, total, total commitment of love. I love you so much that I'm willing to die for you type of love. You see, Peter cannot commit himself to this kind of love right now. He's afraid of saying that he really, really loves Jesus and then feeling him like he did before. Don't be afraid of really, really, really loving Jesus because you're afraid you're going to fail again. We're going to fail him as long as we have breath to breathe and eyes to see. We're going to fail Jesus. But thank God we have a God mm -hmm. who loves us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That even when we fail him, us even when we fail. You see, Peter not about to brag about loving Jesus and then fail to live up to the brag. Jesus has a reply to Peter's response in the last part of verse 15. He says, after breakfast, Jesus, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said, yes, Lord. You know I love you. He said, then feed my lambs. Jesus told him, Peter, I can understand you're reluctant to totally commit to me right now. He said, but I still have a ministry for you. Mm. Oh my God. Until you can totally commit to me, I'll give you a ministry and go feed my baby lambs. Mm. You can do it. Mm. Because That's you good. love me. That's good, God. Maybe you're not a spiritual giant like the Apostle Paul. Maybe you can't go out and start churches, become a preacher or a missionary. But Jesus has a ministry for you. He said, feed my lambs. You might not be a preacher, but you can still work the vacation Bible school. You might not be called to become a pastor, but you can still teach Sunday school classes. You may not call to be an evangelist, but you can still sing in the choir. You may not be called to be a bishop, but you can still go visit the sick. You may not be called to be a prophet, but you can encourage the discouraged. And minister to God's flock. Jesus is telling you this morning if you can say that you love me, prove it. Jesus. Get busy. Mm. That's what I love, even though I wasn't able to be here Friday night. But all the reports that I heard and all the things that took place and all the people that were ministered to. Love and Grace Fellowship, we got busy. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It's not about the four walls of this church. 
We need to go out there and minister to the people and tell them about Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the only way we can do it is we really, really, really love Jesus. You see, Jesus asked Peter the same question a second time. Only this time Jesus leads off more than me. You see why? Because Jesus didn't want Peter to think about any comparison here. He just wants Peter to consider the question, do you love me? Peter forgot about your love for things. He's telling him, Peter, forget about your love for things. Your love for others. He's not about to commit himself to anything he thinks he can't live up to. Mm. I want you to notice something. Notice the response of Jesus. A little different than the first time. He said, feed my lambs. But now he's saying, Shepherd, my sheep. My God. Jesus has a ministry for Peter. He said, Tend my sheep. Not only teach, feed the young Christians lambs, but tend, feed the older Christians sheep. Jesus has more confidence in Peter than Peter has in himself. All right. God knows our life from the end and to the beginning. Nevertheless, Jesus doesn't condemn Peter for the lack of total commitment. Jesus sees Peter's heart and he knows that Peter's ministry will glow along with his love for Jesus. Love it. Use Jesus' words for love. Phileo. He uses Peter's words for love. Phileo. Peter, do you really think very highly of me? Jesus comes down to Peter's confession of love for Jesus. And Jesus starts at the highest plateau of love. And now he descends to Peter's level of love. Jesus is saying, Peter, I'm going to meet you where you're at. God is going to meet you right where you're at. tell me that you love me. You denied me three times. And I want you to tell me three times that you love me. But by this time, Peter is grieved. Not because Jesus asked him three times, because Jesus had come down to Peter's level you see Peter was not prepared to climb up the level that Jesus wants him but he's willing to admit without reservation that he has a deep love and admiration for Jesus now responds to Peter he responds to Peter feed my sheep Peter, I got a ministry for you to teach the young Christians, to teach the mature Christians, lead the mature Christians into ministry. Mature Christians, stop sit on your blessed assurance. <laughs> Hallelujah. God Thank has you, a job Jesus. for you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Jesus is asking each of us here this morning, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you really, really love me? Not do you go to church. Not that you read your Bible. Not that you pray to me. Not that you believe in the Bible. But do you really, really, really love me? This is a chief question in your Christian life today. Everything else is secondary. You see, it's meant to search out our hearts. To get you to evaluate your heart and to tear away all the facades and layers of pretense. Listen, there's one thing I love about Jesus. There's one thing I love about the Lord and our God. He doesn't shoot sugarcoat anything. Amen. Hmm. He'll give you a bitter taste medicine. It will hurt as you look deep within your heart. But Jesus is asking you this question this morning, and he's singling out each and every one of us. Do you Do you really? Really love me. Then, if you do, or even haven't come to that point, you haven't come that far. Just like he asked Peter, in the way, without coming out and saying it, prove it. Become doers and not just hearers. Yes. Are you giving your all to Jesus this morning? It just amazed me this morning how many people were out today and they needed to hear this message. And it's on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, all the members of Love and Grace Fellowship that are not here today. You need to listen to it. And ask yourself the same question. Do you really, really, really love Jesus? Stand to you. times that you really don't enjoy being with Jesus.
Now there are times where you really don't want to talk to people. Are there days that go by that you don't talk to people? And when you do talk to them, do you want to ask them for something, or maybe just a few seconds before you decide to eat dinner? Or when you talk to him, you find your mind wondering and think about other things. He's not always part of my everyday life. I only think about him more on Sunday mornings than any other time of the week. I don't get a chance to read his love letters very often. I just give him a little pocket change every week as long as it doesn't cut into deep into how much I want to spend on myself. I don't appear to have very much to do with Jesus and make him part of my life. Remember, you are the bride of Christ. I'm not going to ask you to come forward. But if any of those fit into your situation, I just want you to go before the Lord and she would be honest. Well, at least it's a Christian commercial. <laughs> But I want you to just reflect as you and him. And ask you that self that question. Do I really, really, really love Jesus? Gracious Father, I come before you now above the name of our Lord Jesus. The name of Jesus. Father, forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us of all our unrighteousness. And Father, when we have failed you, I thank you, God. For still loving us, caring for us. To the point that you know us by name, you know every hair on our head, every thought in our mind. That you'll never leave us or forsake us. I thank you, Lord. Your word says in Isaiah 49. Can a woman forget her nursing child? The word says, but I will never forget you. I have inscribed your name on the palms of my hands. From your walls I have taken you to glory. Peter denied him three times, and Jesus was looking for three confessions. Listen, there's a lost and dying world out there. People need to hear and know about Jesus. People need to have that same love that we have. We 
We got to get busy loving rights fellowship and get out there and minister. I know we have a busy life and we got so much things going on. But do you really, really, really know your Jesus? If you do, I want you to lift up your hands. If you really, really love Jesus, lift up your hands and just worship him. Tell them how much you love them. Cry out to him today, Lord, I love you. Though I may fail you, I know, Lord God, that you still love me. Father, I pray right now for each and every one here in the sound of my voice. That you will bless each and every one here today, Lord God. That you will give each and every one favor, Lord God. I pray that you open doors, Lord God, for each and every one that needs a door open. And close every door that needs to be closed. Father, that you are the Jehovah Jireh, their provider. That you will provide every need. Oh, Lord. One bell, come here, one bell.